what are the uh, functions of uh, thyroid hormone so it acts on every cell in the body it regulates the metabol metabolism by increasing the glucose metabolism protein synthesis of it also increases the oxygen consumption so overall it increases the basic metabolic rate in addition it is also required for tissue differentiation like digestion reproduction bone growth muscle tone and development of nerve cell so if you if you look at see the slides you can clearly make out that the thyroid is is required from intrauterine life to adult life to uh, even when you age so uh, thyroid plays an important role uh, so if, if anybody has a thyroid deficiency it multiple in, in any stage of the their life they are going to have significant symptoms so the overproduction of thyroid hormone is known as thyrotoxicosis okay so overproduction or increased level in the blood of the t3 and t4 which is called as thyrotoxicosis so we'll come across two terms one is hyperthyroidism one is called thyrotoxicosis okay so do not get confused so thyrotoxicosis just means that the patient has a high level of t3 and t4 irrespective of the cause okay that is called thyrotoxicosis cause may be anything but as when you specifically mention hyperthyroidism that means patient has high level of t3 and t4 because of excessive or hyper functioning of the gland okay so t3 t4 can be elevated because of exogenous administration as well okay so if the gland is hyper functioning and you see a very high level of uh, t3 and t4 in the blood that is called hyperthyroidism so next uh, let us discuss what are the common causes of uh, hyperthyroidism or thyrotoxicosis so most common uh, is the graves disease so graves disease is autoimmune disease uh, we are going to go discuss that in detail whether it is hyper functioning of the gland gland uh, apart from that uh, we have toxic mucinoderma goiter we also have what's called as subacute decurrent thyroiditis okay as the name suggests all these thyroiditis are basically the same inflammation within the thyroid gland Now, how does inflammation can produce uh, thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism? Because inflammation should cause destruction of the gland. It cannot increase the synthesis of a uh, thyroid hormone. So, what basically happens is, in case patient, in those patients who have any form of thyroiditis, let us say postpartum thyroiditis or subacute thyroiditis, viral thyroiditis, bacterial thyroiditis, the uh, hormones that the uh, because of inflammation, the thyroid follicles are getting damaged and the hormones are getting released. from the blood okay so basically a premature release or excessive release of the uh, uh, t3 and t4 not because of the high production okay or over production so in graves disease it is basically the uh, over production of the hormone whereas in uh, other thyroiditis any form of thyroiditis you have excessive release of the gland okay they it, it, they, they cannot produce uh, they, there there is no uh, there is no increased production okay that's why it is a transient phenomenon any thyroiditis can cause thyrotoxicosis or and but it's a transient phenomena because it's just a premature release the ultimately it's going to run out and uh, the thyroid hormone level will decrease we also have had another autoimmune disease which is called hashimoto's thyroiditis which is one of the most common cause of uh, hypothyroidism not hyper hypothyroidism in uk okay uh, so but in the initial phases because it is thyroiditis and an inflammation in acute phase you can still have thyrotoxicosis other could be toxic adenoma uh, amiodarone therapy so amiodarone uh, is one of the most popular drugs as an anti arrhythmic drug we generally give this as a treatment of atrial fibrillation ventricular fibrillation and most of the uh, uh, and as an uh, anti arrhythmic drug it's a class 3 drug amiodarone and sotalol so this drug has got significant side effect with thyroid hormone okay it can cause thyrotoxicosis so do remember these drugs so whatever is highlighted in the red color are uh, the question are the Uh, the topics on which previously you, uh, you, there were questions in MRCP exam. Now, what are the differential diagnoses between postpartum thyroiditis and viral thyroiditis? Apart from the uh, the uh, the uh, nomenclature, it is very clear. So, uh, the postpartum thyroiditis usually has a high TPO. It's more likely an autoimmune phenomenon. That's why they have very high uh, uh, the um, uh, tissue peroxidase antibodies. Okay, so antibody level is very high. but the esr is normal whereas in viral thyroiditis because there is a lot of inflammation there is high esr but the uh, antibodies are negative now what are the symptoms of thyrotoxicosis thyrotoxicosis patient can have weight loss they can look like manic that means they have expressive thoughts running of ideas they have look they appear quite restless they have heat intolerance because they are generally generating a lot of heat because of increased basal metabolic rate so they cannot uh, tolerate in hot environment okay 
So generally, they will be wearing minimal dress in a hot environment. That is a clue uh, to your uh, to the answer in the MRCP exam. They may have diarrhea. They may have oligomenorrhea, that is decreased uh, menstrual cycles. Uh, with respect to heart, they can have palpitation, which is undue awareness of one's own heartbeat. They can have tachycardia. They can have high output cardiac failure. Now, these symptoms are more common in elderly patients. Uh, some patients can develop pyrotoxic cardiomyopathy, that is uh, heart failure secondary to hyperthyroidism. Uh, such patients usually, uh, the, once you treat uh, thyrotoxicosis, usually it's reversible. In condition, you can have increased sweating. So palm, uh, the hands will be quite sweaty. That's another important clue in the exam to pick up the thyrotoxicosis diagnosis. The patient can have pre-tibial mixed edema. So it's an erythematous edematous lesion usually over the lateral malady, usually over the shin. So I'm, I'll show a picture in the next slide. Uh, but remember, do not get confused with the term mixed edema. Mixed edema usually a case of severe hypothyroidism. But this pre-tibial mixed edema is seen in thyrotoxicosis. And they can have thyroid acropathy that is clubbing in the of the fingers. Logical symptom, they can have anxiety, tremor. Tremor is most important. Tremorlessness of the hand. If you do investigate, because the patient has hyperthyroidism, the patient will have very high level of T3 and T4. Now, because T3 and T4s are high, it is going to negatively inhibit the anti-repiratory and cause low TSH. Now, in patients who have got the symptoms suggestive, which is uh, uh, indicated by the above symptoms, but you think that the you have done a T4, which looks normal, okay? Uh, but the TSH is low, so that is very difficult to explain. Such in, in scenarios, you might have to do a T3, okay? So because you, the laboratory, just do T4 and TSH, okay? You may miss the diagnosis in such a scenario because even sometimes you can have T3 thyrotoxic. That means only T3 will be quite high, but the T4 will be normal. Of course, you'll be doing trying to understand the etiology of uh, hyperthyroidism. So you'll be trying to address uh, the... Uh, etiology by asking for few investigations such as thyroid and autoantibodies, isotope scanning. I'll let you know what exactly isotope scanning in the next slide. So this is thyroid acropathy. So you can see uh, about the, basically it's a shin lesion, which you can see uh, in uh, multiple phases, uh, initial lesion. This after treatment, the pre tibial mixed edema has disappeared. Okay. So in MRCP exam, if you're going to get shin lesion, there are three important differential here. One is the erythema nodosum. Uh, where which is usually cl classically seen in inflammatory bowel disease, sarcoidosis. Uh, then we have pre mixed edema, which is seen in thyrotoxicosis. We also have what's called as uh, lipodica diabeticorum, which is an yellowish uh, type of a lesion, which is usually seen in type 1 diabetes. Okay, These are the three important differential diagnoses with respect to shin lesions in MRCT exam. You can also include pyoderma gangrenosum. It's another, uh, uh, another uh, ulceration of the uh, of the uh, shin, which is usually seen associated with the inflammatory bowel disease. This is thyroid acropathy. You guess you can be clubbing of the fingers. Uh, along with the, if you take an X-ray, there is a resorption of the phalanges as well. The most important cause of these uh, thyrotoxicosis is Graves' disease in the Western world. So if you are trying to find out the most, uh, if they have not given specifically what etiology of thyrotoxicosis, then you should choose Graves' disease because that's one which is more common in the UK. What are the uh, features of Graves' disease? So in addition to hyperthyroidism or in addition to high T3 and T4, they'll have some specific eye signs, okay? The eye will look quite uh, prominent, which is called exophthalmos. That could be uh, weakness of the extraocular muscles resulting in ophthalmoplegia. So the patient may complain of uh, diplopia or double vision. They obviously, they have pre tibial mixed edema and thyroid acropathy, okay? So if anyone with, who's present with thyrotoxic symptoms has either eye signs or pre table mixed edema or thyroid acropathy, any one of the three, you can safely say that it, this is a patient who has got Graves' disease because eye signs, pre table mixed edema, and thyroid acropathy are quite specific to Graves' disease, which may not be seen in other uh, causes of thyrotoxicosis like thyroiditis, toxic multinodular goiter, or toxic adenoma. Okay, these are features that are specific to Graves' disease. This disease can manifest or worsen during postpartum period. What are the antibodies you get in Graves' disease? We have anti-TSH receptor antibodies. We also have anti-thyroid peroxidase antibody. Okay. So uh, the most important is the anti-TSH receptor stimulating antibodies. Anti-TPO antibodies, thyroid peroxidase antibodies are classically seen in Hashimoto's disease, which causes hypothyroidism. Now, uh, going specifically to the Graves ophthalmopathy. So these are the, you can see a very prominent eyeball here. So characteristic feature are lid retraction. That means... Uh, eyelid get elevated, lid lag. That means when you ask the patient to look downward, the eyelid does not follow the eye movement. 
proptosis which is the prominent of the eyeball so proptosis you can make out because you can see the upper sclera visible between the cornea and the eyelid okay normally you don't see the upper sclera in a, in a normal individual but those patient who have got the graves of palmopathy you can make out the upper sclera as well there's restriction of the extraocular muscle so you can get diplopia uh, there could be compression of the optic nerve resulting in severe visual loss what are the risk factor for graves ophthalmopathy so if somebody has a graves disease it is not everyone of the graves disease will have ophthalmopathy uh, but uh, the risk factor for graves ophthalmopathy are those smokers who have received radio iod therapy we will discuss that in subsequent line so when the patient with graves ophthalmopathy requires urgent referral okay they require urgent referral to ophthalmologist when you see uh, there is severe form of graves ophthalmopathy as indicated by uh, severe loss of vision loss of color vision specifically uh, they are because that's one of the important clues that there is an optic nerve compression a thyroid eye disease can so this patient with graves ophthalmopathy can have both hypo hyper or euthyroid state okay so uh, so uh, the graves ophthalmopathy does not follow the systemic feature okay a, a graves disease can have graves ophthalmopathy at any point in their lifespan okay and during the episode of when they have graves ophthalmopathy they may be hypo hyper or euthyroid as well okay so it does not have any A relation with the blood thyroid level, but it is specific to Graves disease. How do you manage Graves ophthalmopathy? So you you have to give a lubrication drops because uh, otherwise you will have the keratitis because of the ex intense exposure to the atmosphere. You also give anti-thyroid drug known as carbimazole. Okay, carbimazole is one of the important anti-thyroid drugs which decreases the synthesis of thyroid hormone. In case of severe disease, there could be possibility of optic nerve compression. So in such scenario, we usually give them uh, IV steroids. Uh, in this patient, more likely to have uh, palpitation and tachycardia. So we also give them uh, propranolol, beta blocker, which decreases the sympathetic core activity or the palpitation. Uh, uh, the other drugs could be uh, other anti-thyroid drugs or radioactive surgery. So, So treatment option for Graves disease are three. One is giving drugs, anti-thyroid drugs like carbimazole, metimazole. Okay. Second option is giving a radio iodine therapy. Basically, you are using a radio iodine drug and trying to ablate the tissue or surgically removing the thyroid gland. Okay. Let us see how we. Uh, what are the advantage of each one of them? So first is the anti-thyroid drugs. So uh, there are two regimens which are followed in. Uh, uh, um, in giving anti-thyroid drugs, one is you give a very high dose. Okay. Then Uh, try to taper the dose. Second is you give a small dose and try to increase the dose. So these are the two methods which are available. Uh, generally, uh, the most common drug uh, or preferred drug is carbimazole, which inhibits the thyroid peroxidase enzyme and decreases the formation of T3 and T4. Now, once you start these drugs, they take about uh, uh, about three to six weeks for their action, and we need to continue for about 12 to 18 months. The common adverse event with these drugs are a granulocytosis. That means patient has decreased production of granulocyte. So most of them have pancytopenia, and this usually present with opportunistic infection like sore throat, pharyngitis. They can have joint disease. Okay. The only uh, contraindication to give carbamazole is hepatic dysfunction because carbamazole is uh, is metabolized by the liver. So any patient with hepatic dysfunction or joint disease, you are not supposed to give carbamazole. You need to choose alternative drug. Okay. Alternative drug is propyl thiouracil (PTU). Okay. Next, radioiodine therapy. What is radioiodine therapy? So basically, we are taking a radioactive iodine, okay, uh, which is ingested in the form of capsule, and it is once after ingestion, it enters the stomach, and from the stomach, it is slowly absorbed uh, into the blood. Okay, once in the blood, we know that thyroid gland has some sodium iodine import, symporter. That means it is going to concentrate all the iodine in the blood. Okay, so it uh, be, uh, because of the uh, presence of sodium iodine symporter. the even the radioactive iodine is concentrated within the thyroid gland now because it's radioactive it is going to destroy the thyroid follicle okay so there will be a lot of radiation coming from this radioactive iodine molecule and it's going to destroy the thyroid gland okay so this is how radio iodine therapy works but there are some important precautions and contraindication so radiation therapy is a treatment of choice for patient with relapse of graves disease If somebody has a graves disease in the beginning we are not going to give somebody is pregnant we are not going to choose somebody is uh, is expecting uh, uh, to conception we are not going to give okay so radioiodine therapy is not the first line therapy but it is preferred in relapse that means once you have taken uh, antithyroid drugs still persist have symptoms 
then you can use radioiodine therapy. Okay. So majority of the patient will require thyroxine supplement because we it's very difficult to predict that in this much dose of radioiodine will lead to uh, will lead to thyroid this much of percentage of thyroid gland damage. So most of them, what happens over the period of three to five years, entire gland will be destroyed by this radioactive iodine, and ultimately the patient will land in hypothyroidism, and such patient require initiation of thyroxine replacement. What are the precaution? So you should, uh, if you're taking a thyro, uh, the radioactive iodine therapy, you should avoid contact with children and pregnant women because radiation can cause damage to surrounding. Uh, you should avoid conception for four to six months if you're taking treatment. Contraindications of pregnancy, very young age, less than 60 percent of thyroid eye disease. Okay, we mentioned that Graves of Thermopathy. One of the risk factors we mentioned is the radio iodine treatment. Okay, so apart from smoking, so radio iodine treatment itself can cause thyroid eye disease. Now, it should be avoided up to eight weeks following the CT contrast because most of the CT contrast will contain iodine. Okay, and if the body is already replete with iodine, then they, the body will not take radio any additional iodine even even if you give in the form of radioactive iodine okay that is the reason why you should avoid uh, the uh, radio iodine treatment in the patient who has underwent a recent ct scan with contrast surgery is not the uh, method of choice for uh, for the for these patients uh, it's reserved for those people who have got a large goiter they are intolerant not able to tolerate anti thyroid drugs and they are not they cannot tolerate or they have some contraindication for radioactive iodine. 